We're seeing indications that the industry can no longer control the parasite levels on some of their farms. We've seen disasters happen in other countries whereby the industry has lost the chemical arms race to control the lice. Basically between March and June, they're supposed to keep their sea lice numbers on farm below three motile lice per fish. Some of the farms were up over 50 lice per fish. Slice is a chemotherapeutic, basically a drug that they put into the feed on farms and then they develop resistance here and so they're unable to use that. And so their main tool for treating sea lice on farms basically was ineffective last year. This is our ROV and it can dive down to 100 meters. A lot of work has been done on spreads of diseases and the interactions between the wild fish and the farmed fish. And what's exciting about this is that the effects of these fish farms extend all the way to the bottom of the ocean too, or they may, we'll, we'll go see. The bottom became kind of covered in this filamentous green sort of algae with not much else growing on it. Found a lot of lines in the water again and what looked like huge expanses of nets or a kind of mesh just lying on the bottom. All of that debris poses a hazard for larger fish or marine mammals that are hunting the fish around there. It can get tangled in these ropes, but these plastic nylon ropes are basically unbreakable to anything that gets tangled. From the top, the footprint of these farms looks relatively small and everyone has said how deep the nets go and today we got a little more of a picture of how many fish they hold in each pen just based on how many were coming through that conveyor belt. It's, it's a pretty incredible density in there. But I had a friend that worked in the fish farms and he was fairly high up and they sent him to Chile and he said when he came back he was amazed. He said, you know, you in Canada you run twice the volume of fish in your pens that they do in Chile. He said, no wonder you've got such a problem with souring the bottom, because you're just overcrowding. But there seems to be very little regulation as far as the farms are concerned. What we've seen, and this was as recently as a few weeks ago on the west coast of Vancouver Island, where farmed fish in aquaculture pens and click what sound striking these wild herring and these wild baby salmon that were swimming into the, into the pens. What I saw for myself are a lot of very sick fish. There's a lot of young fish that are not the creative salmon fish swimming around in these pens that are not supposed to be in there. Fish with big lesions on their skin. There's open wounds and I saw some salmon with uh, completely crooked spines. The federal body that oversees salmon farms, they have a bias where they overlook threats and concerns to wild fish in favor of the industry.